The demon standing before you clearly has a penchant for jewelry. His fingers are covered in rings. Three gold chains encircle his neck and four bejeweled earrings sparkle in each of his ears. However, such exquisite adornments are not enough to hide the fact that he is a hardened warrior and a ruthless killer. His face and hands are covered in long, badly healed scars, and he moves as gracefully as the most skilled swordsman. Our Lady in Shadow ordered me to ensure your safety in Illusionera. Therefore, I will ask you to remember two rules if you want to survive. First, only leave your residence if you have a clear understanding of where you want to go, why you want to go, and whether it's important for you to go. Otherwise, you'll be sucked into the chaotic maelstrom that is Illusionera. You'll come back to your senses a month later, and you won't even remember why you left or for what purpose. If you need help answering the questions of where to go and why, talk to me. I can give you advice. The second rule for surviving in this city, don't roam around the streets looking for trouble. The streets might seem orderly, but don't be deceived. It only looks that way because we prefer to drag our victims into a quiet alley instead of gutting them on a main thoroughfare. The city is full of those who'd be willing to cut your throat just for the fun of it, so we won't spend a lot of time walking around. If you need to get somewhere, just tell me and I'll transport you. Can you help me search for Relu Vorlesh? Not really. I've seen her a few times, but Illusionaire is not her home. She serves either Baphomet or Discari. I'm not sure which. I've never been interested enough to find out. Nevertheless, she's always greeted with reverence and respect in the city. She's clearly an honored guest here. I've seen her a few times at the Battle Bliss, which is owned by the Cambian Ermangaleth. I also know that she's thrown feasts, both for old acquaintances and new henchmen at the 10,000 Delights. Shavaro, the owner of the venue, constantly brags that Arilu Vorlesh is a regular guest. If you're looking to retrace her steps in the city, these are the places you should visit. I want you to tell me about yourself. Yaz frowns at you suspiciously. Let me save us both some time. My name is Yaz. I'm the leader of Illusionaire's Assassin's Guild, and I am unfortunately tasked with the responsibility of ensuring your safety, regardless of what I think about you or this assignment. That's all you need to know. Are we done with questions? Are you really the leader of the Assassin's Guild? The demon gives a dignified nod. Yes, and I'm proud of it. The abyss is full of butchers and monsters, so anyone who chooses to be an assassin among monsters and butchers commands a high level of respect. If they live long enough to make a name for themselves, of course. My guild attracts assassins from many planes. No one hires us for simple things like murdering noisy neighbors or cutting the throat of a cheating merchant. As I'm sure you know, it's easier and cheaper to do that yourself, and there's no need to get assassins involved. No, if someone turns to an assassin, it means that the victim is a dangerous, cunning, and well-protected target. Why did Nocticula instruct you to watch over me? Because Illusionaire is a dangerous place, and you are a dangerous person. Such a combination could lead to disaster. Your guardian should keep you from picking fights with others, and others from picking fights with you. Then maybe both you and the current way of things here in Illusionaire will survive to see another moon rise. Now tell me, who better to be your nanny than the leader of the city's most vicious and deadly gang of assassins? Anyone who wants to fight will flee at the very sight of me. And what do you think of me? Yaz looks at you closely. I don't think about you. The fact that Nocticula likes you means nothing to me. Today you are a pet and tomorrow you'll lose interest and you'll be a nobody. You'll have to prove your worth if you want my attention. I have no more questions. Always happy to help. Yaz gives you an impeccably courteous and professional smile, then drops all pretense of politeness as he turns away. He makes almost no effort to hide his disgust, rolling his eyes and muttering a long, elaborate string of profanities in his native demonic tongue. I have a question about a Lucianera. Yaz eyes you skeptically. Are you sure you aren't confusing me with a tour guide for bored foreigners? I'm not here to give you a walking tour of the city. Nocticula only ordered me to do two things. Keep you away from places you shouldn't be and keep you from killing her most valuable servants. 
How do you feel about Nocticula? The demon gives you a condescending smirk. Respect. That's what I feel for Nocticula. It's a requirement if you want to live here. You will never find demons who love their masters, but you will also never find demons who do not respect them. Everything here is based on strength. Loyalty is guaranteed when a swift, cruel death is the promised punishment for disobedience. I didn't pledge an oath to Nocticula and I don't serve her. I fear her. And when she asks me to do something, I obey. Tell me about Illusionera. The spirit and philosophy of Illusionera are connected to the city's internal structure. Two walls divide the city into three parts. The mansions of the strongest, most powerful people are located behind the first wall. These people have earned their right to live next to Our Lady in Shadow. The house of my clients, for example, can be found there. On the other side of the city, behind the second wall, you will find the slums. They are full of sewage, blood, poverty, despair, and the very fiercest anger. I find my most promising recruits in that crucible of hatred. After significant training, they often become the most merciless assassins. The middle city lies between these walls. It is the heart of Illusionaire, a crossroads between worlds, and it only exists for one purpose trade. Everyone there buys, sells, or is sold. My guild, for example, is located there, ready to sell the death of your enemies at an agreeable price. So as you can see, to become successful in Illusionera, you will need to embrace the spirit of all three districts and become at home in each of them. When both the nobles and the beggars know your name, you'll finally be a true denizen of Illusionera. Why can I attack Nocticula's servants? Because Nocticula likes the way everything is organized in Illusionaire, and she especially likes it when things run smoothly, without any problems. If you start killing left and right, the resources of those you kill would change hands, upsetting the current balance of power. All this might lead to upheaval, turmoil, and other problems with which our Lady in Shadow does not desire to bother herself. Why am I forbidden to walk freely in Illusionera? Because not all the districts of Illusionera are as safe as the ones we traveled through. There are places you'll be better off staying away from, for your own good. The monsters who live there are much less sophisticated than the ones you have already met. Everything is clear to me now. Always happy to help. We're going somewhere. Where exactly do you want to go? I want to walk the streets of Illusionera. The demon shakes his head. Out of the question. I'm sure you get a chance to spill your blood and decorate the roads of Illusionera with your guts, but it won't be on my watch. To the 10,000 delights. I'm going to stand faster than you can blink. The demon claps his hands, creating a crimson magic light between his palms. As the light grows larger and brighter, Yaz gives you a smug look, wanting to make sure you are suitably impressed by his trick. <laughs>